A very warm welcome to the Content Shift Accelerator Award 2021 and welcome back to the Frankfurt Book Fair. How cool is that? People, people you can talk to, books you can touch, drinking lovely drinks with friends. I'm so happy to be back and I'm delighted also about the award show. We have fantastic startups for you today and let me tell you a little bit about the Content Shift Accelerator. It is a bridge between established industry players and startups so that they together can form the future of the book industry. And 44 startups applied for the program this year from 10 different countries including Finland, England, Canada, India and then in June there was a pitch event and the jury consisting of members from Junferman, Wiley VCH, Cornelsen and Thalia then decided to choose five finalists from these ten top ten startups, which was a very difficult task, but they made it and these five finalists are here today to pitch their concept and I'm very much looking forward to it. And let me tell you a little bit about their process. So after these five finalists were chosen, they underwent a program. They had webinars, they had their own personal mentor who coached them and then they had an intense intensive workshop weekend where they talked about business models, current challenges and cooperation opportunities. Yes, and um, if you are a startup and you have a concept that in some way is connected to the book industry, then you can apply again in March 2022 and maybe we'll see you on the stage here. And if you are an industry player and you want to invigorate your company and you want to have new inspiration, then you can also invest in this program and you'll get a spot on the jury and you will get to know the startups personally. How cool is that? But now to our five finalists. They've been training. They're geared up to pitch here. They're very excited. I'm really excited. And um, what's going to happen is that they have five minutes to pitch their concept. Then I'll ask them a few quick questions because we have a very tight schedule. And then um, the next startup will pitch their concept. And at the end of it, Olaf Carstens from the um, Cornelsen Verlag will then announce the winner of the Content Shift Accelerator 2021. And that winner will win 10,000 euros. And it is an old tradition that in Frankfurt, the winner has to pay uh, green sauce for all the other startups who didn't win and the presenter. So, um, yes, um, without further ado, I'm going to announce the first startup. Um, it is Bot Talk. And um, when people look over my shoulder and they take a look at my laptop, they can see that there's like 50 tabs that are open because like somebody sends you um, a link with an interesting article and you sort of think, oh, that sounds interesting. But then you get a phone call and then you sort of leave the tab open. So in the end, you don't get back to reading that article. But that's where BotTalk comes into it. It's a text-to-speech software that automatically converts texts into audio files so you can listen to them on the go. And in BotTalk, they are very, very close to real human voices. That's very special about BotTalk. So yes, please put your hands together virtually for our Earth's first startup of the day, BotTalk. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Andrew, and um, I'm a co-founder of BotTalk. And if you're anything like me, you love books. But have you ever had this thought that there are books out there you want to read but never find time to do so? We live in this crazy world where we move too fast, we're always on the go, and we never find time to actually do things we attend to do. And we're not alone. More and more people out there consume information in the audio format. And according to Spotify, on average, people spend six and a half hours a week listening to audiobooks and podcasts. But did you know that 95% chance that you will not find the book you're looking for when you're looking, uh, when you're looking in, the, um, um, uh, in Spotify, for example? Well, imagine the world where you can listen to any text out there. And this is the world that Botox creates. We created computer-generated speech that sounds so appealing, so natural, so human, that you actually cannot tell the difference. Sounds too good to be true? Well, take a listen yourself. 
we took this German text and it will be read out loud by a human moderator and then by Botsok. Human first. Ja, ist okay. <lacht> Unsere Persönlichkeit bestimmt ein extrem hohes <lacht> Ausmaß. Ja, uh, yeah, um, that should be a, a voice there. Uh, okay. Um, should we, uh, uh, do you want to continue and then if we yeah, have yeah, the technique, yeah, we can do it at the end. Um, so the effect that uh, I was uh, aiming at was wow effect, <laughs> because it sounds so human. And the next question is, uh, why does it sound so good? Well, um, we develop a technology that can adapt to the way people actually learn to speak, we as humans. And that is why uh, we uh, sound so good. Is it is it possible now to, to play? No, the clicker doesn't work the now. The clicker doesn't <laughs> work. Oh, we're having technical yeah. issues. It's always, <laughs> it's like Monday morning, isn't it? Yeah. We have to sort of groove back into it because we yeah. haven't had the book fair for so many years. Yeah, so um, if the next uh, slide will uh, will start, that will be great. Um, so basically that allows bot talk uh, to sound uh, uh, more natural than our competitors at Google, Amazon, IBM, and Microsoft. What bot talk does, it, it learns from its mistakes. It corrects those mistakes with a 99% accuracy. Mm -hmm. So the... 1% that is left is corrected by real humans on our editorial team. And today, uh, the publishers, the news publishers in Germany, publish every day thousands and thousands of audio articles uh, based on Botox technology. And this is the technology that we want to bring to the book publishing industry. So the next time when you don't have time to read, you can listen to the uh, book that you would love to. A divine voice just told me that now you can play the voiceover. <laughs> okay. If you like. Okay. Unsere Persönlichkeit bestimmt in extrem hohem Ausmaß, wie wir Beziehungen gestalten. Die Merkmale einer Persönlichkeit werden zu einem großen Teil im Laufe der Biografie angelegt, bleiben über lange Zeit hinweg stabil und beeinflussen, wie eine Person denkt, fühlt und handelt. That was human and then um, the Botox. Unsere Persönlichkeit bestimmt im extrem hohen Ausmaß, wie wir Beziehungen gestalten. Die Merkmale einer Persönlichkeit werden zu einem großen Teil im Laufe der Biografie angelegt, bleiben über lange Zeit hinweg stabil und beeinflussen, wie eine Person denkt, fühlt und handelt. Okay, that is the wow effect that I was <laughs> waiting for. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, Andre, I asked you about your name and then I forgot to actually say it. Andre Ezaolov. That's yep. your name, right? Yeah. I'm a bit shocked because I do voiceover work. <laughs> do, I have to, do I have to get a new job? Is this what you're telling me? Uh, well, I'm telling you that maybe in five years. <laughs> <laughs> okay, can I start in your company? <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about it after, after the <laughs> okay. show. Well, thank you so much. Um, can you tell me maybe in like one or two sentences what you took from this program and, for instance, this intensive workshop? Yeah, yeah basically, uh, we started already as a, a business inside of a news publishing. And here it was important for us to uh, look at our business model and to translate it for the book publishers. So, for example, in the news uh, um, business, we are charging per article. And now we are charging per minute mm -hmm. because it's more comparable with a, a human narrator now. And so how is it, uh, if you have a personal mentor, um, is it something that um, is more intensive and they actually like work on a business model or how, how does it, how is Definitely. it different? Definitely. So we can ask uh, direct questions, uh, we, we can have uh, direct calls and uh, what is also important to validate your idea straight away with a possible client. So our mentors can introduce us to uh, book publishers and we can talk and say, okay, is it something that you will be interested in? And if so, how much would love uh, to pay for that? <laughs> yeah, <How much> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> cool. And uh, do uh, remember that if you win, you have to give green sauce for everybody. Yeah, of course. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Green sauce round has to I, I've on you. I've cooked it all night, yeah. <laughs> cool. Okay, Andre, thank you so much. Sorry about the technical issues no and problem. good luck. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. And uh, yes. 
And swiftly, we will continue with our next startup. Book have the vision to relieve publishers of an unpleasant but extremely important task, managing the metadata of their books. Book wants to help other publishers improve their sales in the future, something that is particularly interesting for the backlist. The software can be used to visualize, among, things, among other things, how the sales of individual titles are develop developing. So please welcome Christopher Klein and Jens Helbig, both founders and CEOs of Book. Hi. Hey. So, have you ever tried to publish and sell a book? And have you ever tried to market it? Well, we did, and we failed mightily initially. <laughs> because writing a book and selling a book are two completely different challenges, as we had to find out the hard way. We, Chris and Jens, wrote our book about 10 years ago, and uh, while we were studying economics. To sell it, we founded a publishing house and spent various nights programming our own web shop. We were convinced that our books and the message of our books is too important uh, so everybody would read them and should read them. Besides spreading our message, we had high hopes to gain some money to improve our poor college lives. <laughs> But guess what? During the next six years, we only sold like a handful of books, even though we had written some more books by then. What a great disappointment. But our message was just too important. So giving up was not an option. We just needed to know, why didn't we sell any books? Were we wrong about the idea or had bad content? The feedback of our readers suggested otherwise. But then, what could be the reason? Our investigation revealed that our books simply couldn't be bought because they couldn't be found by the reader, neither online nor offline. So what did we do? By going through a tedious process of trial and error, we spent a great amount of time, seven years to be exact, <coughs> gaining know-how and generating results. Finally, we changed our approach dramatically and focused our efforts on book discoverability. And what happened then? Within three years, we were able to sell about 100,000 copies. We went from no-sellers to best-sellers. Now you probably ask yourself, Do I have to invest seven years to generate the same results? Not anymore. Thanks to Book, everybody can make their books more discoverable within seconds. From huge publishing houses with thousands of books to single self-publishers. No know-how required. How does Book do it? Book is an intuitive platform that measures your book's health based on more than 50 key performance indicators represented by the book score, a unique scoring system. By analyzing more data than anyone else in the industry, book's algorithm generates a variety of intelligent recommendations which are easy to follow by anybody. And the result? Better discoverability and more sales. All you have to do is entering an ISBN number and book does the rest. Put an end to the nerve-wracking, time-consuming and labor-intensive work of metadata management which only exhausts your employees. Turn it into a fun game and observe how employees love to play on the book playing field by increasing sales performance effortlessly. Get your own playing field now. Go to book.app and register for free. See you yes. on the other side. Okay, thank you guys. Um, so, uh, did I get that right? People can test your software for free? Yes. And they just have to register on yes. this website. Cool. So, in these seven years, did you ever say, Damn it, let's give up, let's do something else, let's completely change our career. <laughs> yes, basically it was like a side hustle then. <laughs> really? <laughs> and uh, it got more intense with the time, but we really wanted to have some success and we really tried hard and uh, yeah, at some point it just uh, made click and uh, we found like a way to, to boost sales and then we did it like full time. When was the click? Because seven years is a long time. Yeah, like four years ago. Four years ago. Yeah. And then suddenly you had like the idea and then your book sales went Exactly. So what crazy. we did manually with a lot of time and uh, effort, uh, we wanted a machine for that because we weren't able because to... Because you were lazy. It. Yeah, basically. <laughs> basically yeah, yeah. We had other things to do. So we <laughs> wanted to write and, and keep our publishing house growing, but mm -hmm. uh, it was just too time consuming to do all this work. So we wanted a machine that does the work for us. 
And so we, uh, the idea of Book actually uh, originated that we wanted this machine for us. I see. And then we discovered that many other publishing houses are um, fighting with the same challenges of making their books more discoverable. And that's when we opened Book up to, to everybody. Okay, we sh we'll share our machine. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so you were saying that was a side hustle. Uh, at what stage did, was this sort of full time? After you sold the 100,000 copies, you were like, okay, guys, I think we can, we can give up our other job. Yes, uh, basically when um, like uh, the earnings uh, were high enough so we could quit our regular job. And <laughs> What was the regular job? I was a portfolio manager and okay. Chris was on a golf range. Yeah, he was on a golf course. Manager. Really? Yeah. Ah, okay. And now you're happy that you've yes. left Way more jobs. happy. <laughs> yeah. Way well, better. Thank you so much, guys. Um, it's a pleasure talking to you and good luck. Thanks. And yes, next up. <laughs> Next up, we have the Tinder app of books, Rido. Some of you may be, have experience with Tinder, some maybe not. Um, but if you know Tinder, you know there's slides. So this is a bit like a Rido works. So if you, for instance, say, I want a, a romantic novel that plays at the book fair, the Frankfurt book fair. I want two startups to fall madly in love with each other. And, um, and I want a happy end, then you can just Use this app and decide what slides you want to use. You can choose between sad, serious, exciting, or challenging. And then, depending on what you choose, the, um, then titles will match quotas, and uh, quotas are suggested. And then you might have a 90% match. A book called The Content Shift Accelerator Love Story, for instance, with a happy end. And so this app chooses books for you, which is really cool, I think. So please put your hands together for Ben Kors. You probably know this feeling too. You're walking in a bookstore and you're overwhelmed by endless bookshelves. Every year, there are 70,000 new releases in Germany alone. That's almost 200 books a day. How should you find your next book in this jungle of books? Studies have shown that most people want to read and buy more books, but they're just not able to find any which meet their interest. No wonder that most readers heavily rely on bestseller recommendations. After all, those are the books which are bought the most. But imagine if you would just have to listen to the most popular song. Would that meet your interest? Ten years ago, we all listened to the music charts and we all watched big TV blockbusters. Today, we all have our own charts in our own pockets. Spotify and Netflix have shown what can be achieved if you give your customers really good and personalized content. And this is our vision for the book market. In our own app, readers can enter their favorite books and then receive books recommendation based on their personal reading profile. The question now is why are our book's recommendations so good? When we open a book, we want to laugh, we want to cry, we want to be inspired. To put it in a nutshell, we want to feel emotions. And the Redo recommendation system knows how books will make us feel when we read them. You're probably asking yourself now, how does Redo even know which emotions are in which books? To do this, we wrote an artificial intelligence which analyzes written text reviews. To this day, we have analyzed over 2.5 million reviews and classified over 300,000 books emotionally, thematically, and stylistically. We strongly believe there is a fitting book for everyone. And our mission is to find these and connect them to the fitting people. With the help of beautiful book recommendation, we want to turn every single individual 
into a book lover. Now, I want to invite you to our journey. On the first hand, you just can download the app and find your next favorite book. On the other hand, we are looking forward for book industry partners. So, if you are searching for a new way to sell your books, or if you're just seeking for innovation, or if you're just looking forward to change, we would love to talk to you in the next days. This said, I want to thank you for your innovation and your attention, and I want to welcome you to the world of Vido. Thank you, Ben. How many times have you done this pitch? <laughs> <laughs> Once or twice. <laughs> Um, so maybe you can also tell us about uh, the three-month program, how it sort of changed your pitch possibly, or what you learned in this three-month program. <laughs> uh, that will be a long answer, but the short okay. answer is kind of simple. We had lots of project ideas. We had lots of projects hidden in the our agenda, and now we met the people which having can help us to do these projects, which got us to the next step, and which have helped us to develop corporations with MV, uh, MVB. And this is, I think, a step for a startup, which usually takes two or three years. We could do this with the Startup Accelerator in three months. Cool. And um, just coming back to your pitch, <laughs> was there like input that you got um, how to change your pitch or um, you know, how to maybe also your website, like practical tips or how uh, exactly did it work? There was feedback on every single step of our company. Uh, of course, there was a pitch training as well, which helped us a lot. Um, but as a startup, you usually do 10 to 15 pitches a year. So <laughs> it's, it's kind of normal practice. business for us. Yeah. But of course, the startup uh, accelerator helped us to get it on a point, especially for the book industry. Sometimes you need to change the perspective a little bit. Mm -hmm. And as a startup, so you're coming from a startup world and we shifted this pitch especially now to the book industry world. Ah, very cool. Well, thank you so much, Ben. I think it sounds really appealing. Um, I normally also, as you mentioned, actually look at the bestseller list or maybe get recommendations from friends. But this sounds really appealing, so I'm definitely oh, I hope I can welcome you at the Reader app tomorrow. Yes. Thank you, Pleasure. Ben. Bye. Good luck. <laughs> So, uh, the problem with seminars on topics such as soft skills or team building, we know it all. We go and do these fantastic exercises. We have two days of intensive training. We love it. We think we're going to change everything. And as soon as these two days are over, we sort of forget about it all, basically. So, this is where day off can help. Using the app, small challenges can be integrated into everyday life and so realized on a daily basis. The goal is, of course, to establish a sustainable system and for participants to carry out the challenges automatically in the long term. So please put your hands together for Lino Torangena and Corinne, Corinne? Corinne? <laughs> Friar from Day Off. Hi, guys. Hi. We are Lino and Corinne from Day Off, and we want to change the way soft skills are trained today. Soft skills are more important than ever. For example, how you manage your own time, how you manage yourself, how you lead a team, or how you appreciate the work of others. But the way soft skills are trained today is really inefficient. People have to learn too much theory at once. Um, it is not individualized and adapted to their needs, and studies show that only 10% of what is learned is actually applied in day-to-day -day work. Mm. So 90% of training investment is lost. And we wanted to change that and build Day Off as a web application for psychologically based and efficient soft skill training, where learning happens every day, is individualized for every, everyone, and the application of the learning is actually brought into daily work. We call that approach e-doing. So how does that look like? We give employees daily challenges, like the one you see here on the left, where the employee Merle gets the challenge to appreciate something about the work uh, that helped her in the last week. So go to a colleague and tell them what they appreciate about their work in the last week. This is one example of over 500 challenges that are included in Day Off so far. Challenges of out of 20 soft skill modules. And since every employee learns differently, we use machine learning to individually adapt our learning paths to each individual and each team. Our goal is to keep the employees engaged and motivated to train and develop themselves further. This is why we do three things. First, all our challenges are 
um, uh, designed to be interactive and exciting, and also ready to be applied directly in your work. Secondly, we use lots and lots of gamification, as you can already tell from our screenshots. <laughs> uh, so that means you can level up your skills in the app, you can earn achievements, and you can earn points for your team. And when your team reaches a certain score, then you unlock team incentives. That means that pizza is ordered for everyone, or that everyone in your team gets a day off. That's also where our company name comes from. <laughs> so um, this keeps uh, employees engaged to develop themselves further. But also companies get something out of day off. They can measure the training success of their employees accurately, instead of relying on uh, individual evaluations. They can increase the productivity of every single employee, teams, and the company um, on the total company. And overall, overall, they can also improve their employer branding. So let's take a look at one of our clients, the Kanka Business Software AG. They have a great psychological competence model uh, that focuses on 16 skills their employees need to have. But they struggle to make it come to life, make it be applied in daily work. So that's where we came in. We took their competence model, and their employees had daily challenges, uh, did daily challenges every day. And the result was that not only did the skills of the employees improve, they also loved it. Uh, Jasper Alt, the head of employee development of Kanka, says that they offer a great method of digital employee training and that it, it motivates their employees in their daily autonomous development. In Day Off, we combine our experiences of uh, psychology, computer science, machine learning and coaching. That makes Day Off a psychologically effective and scalable solution. And today we brought to you, especially for the book fair, a special offer, the Day of Change Booster. The Day of Change Booster um, makes your team, your company and your employees ready for change in only eight weeks. So, Go to our website, uh, dayoff.de, uh, get your change booster, get your day off, and thank you for listening. I love the offer. <laughs> Is there like a discount, uh, like a Frankfurt Book Fair code? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> That's already, already included in the offer. That's our cool. And do you guys have employees? Do you sort of test your like incentives? Do you say, okay, uh, pizza today, guys? I love that incentive, by the way. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, we use the app ourselves uh, okay. w with our whole team, uh, and it's great. It's also funny because like, sometimes you can write messages to the others, so it's cool to see what the others are doing right now, and yeah, it keeps us motivated as well. Are you both gamers? or? Um, yeah, we, are bo <laughs> we, we both game sometimes yeah. uh, and included some of these uh, special like psychologically uh, effective techniques into our app to keep uh, it fun. Yeah, that's and, really important. Yeah, long-term motivating. Yeah, cool. And um, so maybe you can also tell me what um, what you learned in this three-month program. Yeah, uh, it was really cool to talk to experts in the in the book industry because we do content uh, as we present here, but it's not really totally related to the book industry. Uh, it made us even change our business model a bit. So right here we talk about companies, but now we're planning on a new offer that we offer to uh, authors and publishing houses. Mm -hmm. If you sell uh, a book that has something to do with training, we want to offer Day Off as a companion to that book so readers can follow the book and then apply what they learn in the book directly. So if you have something like that, come talk to us. We're ready uh, to discuss that further. And uh, do your employees also get a day off? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. If they use the app uh, over a long time, but uh, for companies, they can choose their incentives uh, themselves doesn't so no pizza. It doesn't have to be the day off. Uh, you can also, for example, plant trees if you cool. reach a certain point, certain points. So flexible. It's flexible. Cool. Well, thank you so much, guys. Good luck. And uh, yes, sounds like a cool app. Thank I have you. to uh, tell my employer to day off. Sounds like a good idea. <laughs> right. Laura Moon's sister has Down syndrome and therefore has difficulty communicating her wishes in such a way that others can easily understand her. Signs can help. Moon came up with an idea that is as simple as it is ingenious. Why not illustrate flipbooks with individual words in sign language? And so together with Maria Möller, who she met during her studies at the European School of Design, she founded Talking Hands with the aim of making sign language tangible. They recently started Baby Signs, sign language for babies, which trains them to ex express their needs non-verbally. And I really like that idea because can you just imagine that? 
when parents and babies talk to each other in sign language and the baby's like, no, I don't need a change of nappies. I actually need more food. How many sleepless nights that would save? Like, that it, I think the communication is a very important point. So I love that idea. But yes, now we're going to talk about talking hands. So please put your hands together for Maria Möller. Hi, hello. Um, I'm Maria, the co-founder of Talking Hands Flipbooks. Is it not working? It's oh. maybe I need to press harder. Do we have? Uh, <laughs> but it's not working. Okay. Um, do we have somebody who can tell us why the technic side is not working? Ah, here we go. Okay, <laughs> perfect. So. Approximately one in 10 children suffer from some form of hearing or speech impairment. Reasons for this include Down syndrome, deafness, autism, or insufficient language training. And that all leads to isolation and frustration. So something needs to be done to prevent kids from feeling alone. Because One's disability cannot have an impact of one's participation in life. And sign language is the key or the bridge to make communication between kids with and without disability possible. So we looked at the learning material that is out there for kids to learn sign language and we thought that for kids without disability to learn sign language, it kind of needs to be fun because they don't necessarily have to learn sign language. And that's why we created Talking Hands Flipbooks. And it looks like this. So. Ja, sehr gut. <lacht> Ja, Tablet ja, ist ja, ja. Also. So geht Tablet. Musik geht so. Ja, das ist laut. So. So we turned the individual signs into individual flipbooks. So it's easy to learn and it's also a great exercise for your motor skills. And it's also fun for adults, of course. Um, And additionally, we're working on our Talking Hands app and we will release a beta test version of our app this weekend. It's still in review at the App Store, but hopefully this weekend. And so you can learn sign language on the go or at home um, through fun digital games. We uh, looked at our competition and the thing that we really think is the most important is the learning incentive for all kids. Because if we want inclusion to really work, we need to kind of get all kids together and make all kids learn together and learn sign language and learn how to communicate. So we felt like it was missing from, from all the others and we really strive to uh, make products that are fun for everyone. Um, so this is where we're at right now. We've um, expanded our flipbook collection. We've launched our baby signs. We're right now launching our app. And someday we hope to be some sort of inclusion pioneer because we strive to be a company that creates more and more fun and easy tools um, that strengthen inclusion and, you know, don't leave anyone out. Um, We've uh, been really lucky in, in the PR area because we've had um, a few articles written about us that also increase the awareness of talking hands and um, helped us you know, convince a lot of kindergartens and schools to really use, uh, use our flip books and to kind of make sign language a reality in, in a lot of daycares, which is really important to us. Um, because daycares and schools um, are basically, you know, our main, our main target group, because that's where you reach 
most, most of the kids. Um, this is our team. Um, Laura is behind the scenes with me right now, and Jacob right now is in London, and he's um, going wild with our app um, and working really hard. Um, so thank you, Jacob. And um, yes, that, uh, we're, we're talking hands, and we say thank you in sign language. It goes like this. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you so much, Maria. Um, can I ask you about the illustrations? Um, who illustrates that? Uh, Laura illustrates all the all the flip books by herself. Cool. Um, yeah, with a lot of love to detail. Absolutely. And uh, can you also tell us about, because you said that uh, in kindergartens, for instance, um, you're using the flip books. Um, what's the feedback you're getting? Oh, the feedback is amazing because um, a lot of the kitas and daycares, they try to kind of get the kids to learn sign language before with like little cards that had illustrations on them and that worked with arrows. But first of all, you know, the kids weren't motivated enough to learn with them. And then also there always had to be a teacher to kind of teach them how the movement goes, how to do the sign. And the flip books are kind of just self-explanatory because you flip through them and you just see the movement and and flip books in general they they are kind of magic to little kids because you, you know you bring pictures to life with your own thumb um, so it, re it works really, really amazing. And how did you, like, obviously you had trial and error, did you adapt it or what, what kind of learnings did you make over the time? Um, the, the set that you saw in the film, the flip books were a little bigger and the paper was a little stiffer. And then we realized, okay, for the really small kids, the flip books need to be smaller and the, the paper needs to be softer. So we kind of you know, created a whole new set with like the perfect material for um, children's hands. Um, so that, that was a big learning. And then also all those schools and kindergartens that use our flip books, they always write us emails and say, mm. oh, we need the colors in flip books and more animals and more um, relatives. And they have, they have a lot of, <laughs> a lot of uh, words um, for us. Yeah, so cool. we're, we're still expanding our collection. And uh, baby signs, do you want to say a few sentences about that? Because it sounds like such a clever yeah. idea. <laughs> well, baby signs is not necessarily our idea. Baby signs is like... As yeah, it's it's just it's basically well, baby signs are based on sign language, um, but it's like you don't learn whole sentences. Of course, you just learn, you know, words like milk, which goes like this. So <laughs> kind of like you milk a cow. Makes complete sense. <laughs> exactly, and then you know every time you feed your baby and you you know you give them the bottle or you know whatever, and then you make the movement to the milk. And then at some point, the baby kind of connects the fact that it's, you know, getting yeah. the milk. Uh. And my mom always does the sign. And then nec the next time the baby is hungry or wants the milk, it can, you know, kind of do the sign. With the little thing. Itself. With exactly. <laughs> exactly. So you can tell your parents when you're hungry or when you want to sleep. So so we ha our baby sign said it consists of like of 10 flip books. So it's like a very, but it's like all the basic needs that babies have. I was going to say, that that's probably <laughs> so the most basic needs, much. 10 basic needs yeah. of baby needs. Yeah, but it works great. Cool. Uh, and maybe also like one or two sentences, what you learned in the last three months? Oh, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. Well, um, so what we did learn was that we're not alone in our pursuit of paper because paper is so rare right now and we're really struggling to mm -hmm. find um, a printer that still had lots of paper. And then, you know, we talked to our mentors and they were all kind of like, well, everyone faces this problem, and but they still helped us find printers. So we, we just felt like we, we weren't alone. And then, of course, we had a great pitch training. This is actually the first English pitch that we've, wow. that we've done. Everything else had always been in German. It was fantastic. <laughs> oh, thank you. And then just in general, the whole networking process with all the other teams was great. And um, it's really fun to also get to know people and, and other startups that are also kind of connected to the book world in one way or the other. So it was an amazing experience. 
Cool. Well, thank you so much, Maria. Thank you. We're all going to network together tonight, I heard. We're all going for dinner together. I'm going <laughs> to celebrate the winners and the other startups. We're going to have a fantastic evening. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes. And... Um, The content shift jury, consisting of Sabina Haag and Hartmut Gante from Wiley VCH, Detlef Brütner from Lehmanns Media and Dr. Leif Göritz from Thalia, Olaf Carstens from the Cornelsen Verlag, Dr. Stefan Dietrich from Junferman Verlag and from the Börsenverein Committee, Karin Schmidt-Friedrichs and Ronald Schild and Cross Industry Ally, Deepa Gautam Nigel from SEP Next Gen Ecosystem, all together decided who's going to win today and here to announce the winner is Olaf Carstens. Please come on stage, Olaf, and tell us who's, who's the winner. Oh, you're coming from that side. Now the final moment has come. Thank you. Well, it was a very tough discussion we had in the jury and we decided to award first place to two startups as they address very different and yet equally important topics in the industry. Bot Talk has the potential to give the trending topic of voice a substantial boost in the book industry with its business model. This startup offers publishers a smart text-to-speed solution made in Germany away from Amazon and Google, which can be implemented in an uncomplicated, professional manner while also offering a highly competitive price. This simplifies the format change for readers and makes the books accessible in various life situations. And, congratulations. Rido, on the other hand, convinced us with a concept that counteracts the loss of readers. Their recommendation engine, based on needs-orientated metadata, opens up a new level of accuracy and content quality in book recommendations. This will enable the industry to rekindle enthusiasm and reading increase ready frequency. We will also keep a close eye on the next stamp planned by Rido, which are intended to create a digital community platform for books by expanding the app features. Cool. Well, congratulations, guys. Come on stage. <laughs> Woo! Yay! I heard there's a big check. And here it is. Ta-ta. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> yes, let's all get organized so you look lovely on stage. Congratulations, guys. How does it feel? <laughs> well, that feels amazing. Uh, and yeah, uh, we were, yeah. I, I have no words to, to describe it. I, I, I wish Botok could talk for me right now. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay, guys, you, short feedback. I know what are you going to do with the money? <laughs> <laughs> First of all, Sad, it was a really, really tough competition. And I'm really proud to be here today. And I will just say a few words with Johnny. Yeah, I just want to say good job, Ben. Today I didn't have to do much, but uh, you did really <laughs> great for the team. So I have to thank you from all of us. And you know uh, green sauce, no? Yeah, yeah, Tonight. Yeah. <laughs> I have it. Cool. Well, thank you so much, guys. Um, yes, and uh, as you already mentioned, the program is definitely worth participating in. So if you are a startup and you think you have some sort of connection to the book industry, then you should apply for the program. And if you're an industry player and you want to invigorate your business or you say you want some new inspiration, then um, you can also apply for the program and invest some money and be a jury a member and then get to know these wonderful startups personally. How cool is that? So yes, that's it from the Content Shift Accelerator Award Show 2021. It was a pleasure as always. Thank you to all our wonderful startups. Thank you to um, our wonderful jury. Thank you to everybody who organized the whole thing um, from the Börsenvereinsgruppe, Stephanie Perk and Lea Pfeiffer and all the other people who are involved whose names I don't know. And also thank you to the studio here for streaming the whole thing. So yes, that's it from uh, the Content Shift Award Show 2021. See you again next year. Thank you.